It's your boy LZ catch up 300. Y'all know I'm coming. Every year before the season start, I always look at the rosters and see which player I think will have breakout years. I was on 2K and going through the roster, I said I might as well do it like this since they have stats and everybody is in one group and I can just go through it. And this is not in any order. I found seven players that, will, uh, that are guaranteed to have breakout years. And number one is Zach Levine. Zach Levine, I I know he was traded for Jimmy Butler, but I, I thought they would keep I always knew that they would probably break them up, and I I never knew why, but I knew Carl and Town would leave. I thought it would be um, Wiggins or Levine, and they gave up Levine. Levine had a great year last year. 19 points a game. Improved his three-point shooting. They thought he was just going to be a, a slasher. He was all in and shooting threes and stuff like that. Then he got hurt. I guess the Timberwolves in win now mode, and they didn't know how Zach Levine would respond, but I think he will come back better than ever and average around 23 to 25 points a game with this Bulls team. He has no help. No Jimmy Butler, no Dwayne Wade. I watched a preseason game with them the other day, and they was trash. They couldn't even make layups. They went possession miss like two, three layups. Chris Dunn didn't do anything. So, Zach Levine has to play like that, or they will be probably the worst team in the league. 23 to 25 points a game for Zach Levine, because he is a great player. He improved every year. 19 points a game. You were 14 points a game, then 19 points a game. So, I think... He will have that breakout year when he come back healthy. Second is Austin Rivers. Austin Rivers. I sat here. When he got drafted, I was the biggest Austin Rivers fan out of, because he, he, I think he still had the best hoop mistake ever. Literally, I think he had the best hoop mistake ever. And when he drew a draft in 2012, I'm thinking, yeah, he gonna be the truth. He gonna be the truth. He disappointed me. He been disappointing me. And last year, he had a, a up in his numbers with 12 points a game. And he had two rebounds, three assists. But this year, he is going to have to average between 17, 15 to 17 points a game at least. At least. Chris Paul is gone. Patrick Beverly is a 3 and D guy. When he come in the game, they are going to look for him to score. His role is going to increase. So, Austin Rivers is going to have to score points. He's going to be, have to be the Austin Rivers that I saw in high school and improve and do everything like that. I hope he does. I'm believing that he does. So, number two is Austin Rivers. Hopefully, he get everything done and become that player that everybody wanted him to be. Number three is Rodney Hood. Rodney Hood is a very underrated player. And I think he is going to break out this year with at least 18 to 19 points a game because of going ahead with leaving. With going ahead with leaving, he has more room to score the ball. You know, um, he really don't have to give it up to nobody. You got Go Bear down there. You got He is going to be the center of attention. He's going to have to shoot the threes. He was he lacked in threes during the playoffs, but I think he bounced back. It's free for him. It's free for him to do everything he want to do. So I look at him between uh, around 19 points a game, and this is my biggest, my biggest improvement of the year. Evan Fournier has been a player I've been looking at for at least two to three years. I don't know why I have so much high hope for Evan Fournier, but it's, it's, I just feel like he is going to be a player that just comes out of nowhere. I just believe that Evan Fournier with the Magic. You got Vujicic, you got, I mean, I mean, Terrence Ross, Alpha Payne, he, look at his stats, just look at his stats, look how he just go up every single year, every year he keep going up, and I promise, if he played the whole season, he would average 23 points a game, I'm looking for him 23 to 25 points a game, I just like Evan Fournier, I like the way he play, uh, he real laid back like the personality say on 2K, um, I just think Evan Fournier will be that player for the Magic. I've been looking for him to step up a lot, but he's been doing it uh, on a slight, doing just like this. But I think he have a big year and have 23, 24 points a game. That's my biggest sleeper in the NBA right now. And y'all know I always talk about Denzel Russell because I believe he is in a perfect system for him, for the way he plays. He is not a great player for Magic Johnson because Magic Johnson wants somebody. Magic Johnson wants Alonzo Ball. That's what he wants. Denzel Russell can pass the ball. He's a great passer, but he wants to score the ball also. And he didn't have it. He did not have two bad years. He had 13 points as a rookie. He was a rookie with 13 points. Then almost 16 points last year. So Denzel Russell, like I said, between 22 to 23 points a game with Allen Crabb. I see him with six, seven assists a game with Timothy Mosgolf. He got a lot of players around him. They are not going to be the best team in the league. But he is going to make them make Brooklyn look better than they have been. They're not going to be the worst team in the league this year. I know that for a fact with Denzel Russell on that team. I think he has too much upside for anybody to say that they're going to be the worst team in the league. They got a lot of players too. Look out for that. Alan Crabb is a great player. He just 
he wasn't able to be that player with the Trailblazers because they already had CJ McCullum and Damian Miller. And when he got on the floor, one of them was on the floor with him. Next, Gary Harris. When I, I started liking Lee Jokic last year, when he did the turnaround, when he did the turnaround in the past on the Warriors, and Gary Harris, when I played with them, was a player that I always saw as Gary Harris can be good. He can shoot threes. He can he can do everything about average. He can shoot threes. He can do everything for you. And I think he have a breakout year too. I think he have between 18 to 20 points a game. I just like his upside too. 210, 64, can shoot the ball. And with Jokic, Jokic is going to have a lot of pressure on him this year. And Jokic can pass the ball. If you open, Jokic can get the ball to you. He is a great pass. He's like a point guard down there at the center role. So I think Gary has to have a breakout year too. And the last person is uh, Nurkic, Yusuf Nurkic. If he can stay healthy for the Portland Trailblazers, they can do something. That That is not the missing piece they need. They will not be... They will be in the playoffs, but they will not be the play the team they want to be if they would have got mellow. If they would have got mellow with Nurkic too, being healthy, then I would say they would, they would do something. But it's, the West is too hard right now. The West is too hard not right now. But Nurkic needs to be consistent and not be hurt all year. If you can stay with him, because he's a great player. They traded him because Jokic was there. He did everything while uh, Nurkic was hurt. So I think he had between 17 points a game. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me know y'all breakout players. It's your boy, LKJ300. Y'all know I'm coming. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and let's get these digits.